Good morning, everybody. How y'all doing? Y'all know who this is. This is your boy, Rob Thomas Jr., and this is the real news behind the news. Oh, yeah, man, today is Tuesday, July 26th, 2022. And I'm going to real, be real brief, as usual, in this video, but I want to talk about how our children are being bewitched by this music. See, there's a two-part plan to destroy this new generation, this young generation. It's called, I call it seduction and sedation. Our children are being seduced. Believe it or not, y'all, a lot of people don't want to accept this fact, but the music and the entertainment that's geared for our children, this young generation, they're being seduced and they're being sedated in the process. See, the process is to bewitch you with this music. Let me read something to y'all real quick. Y'all know I'm not a religious person, but I do believe in the various scriptures, you know, that have been throughout history. And this here comes from the book of Proverbs, chapter 1. Believe it or not, in this chapter, we are told about gang activity. And, you know, a lot of people never really... Uh, taught it like this but I'm, I'm gonna speak to it real briefly and then I'm gonna show you how the thug culture came in and played a part it's all a spiritual bewitching though you gotta realize even thug these cats running around here claiming thug and have no idea that that is actually a spiritual religion let me read this first then I'll go on and explain that this is Proverbs chapter 1 and we're gonna start um, with verse 10 my son, if sinful men entice you, do not give in to them. If they say, come along with us, let us lie and wait for innocent blood. Let's ambush some um, harmless soul. Let's swallow them alive like the grave and whole, like those who go down to the pit. We shall get all sorts of valuable things and fill our houses with plunder. Cast lots with us and we shall share the loot. My son, do not go along with them. Do not set foot on their path. Nor for their feet rush to evil. They are swift to shed blood. How useless to spread a net where every bird can see it. These men lie in wait for their own blood. They ambush only themselves. I we're gonna look at that and that, that it's obvious. This is talking about the gang culture. He's warning young men. The book of Proverbs is a book of warning, a book of wisdom, a book of knowledge. And in the first few chapters, he's speaking to young men. He's warning them of the ways of hanging with other young men who are in wait for blood, who lie uh, in wait for blood. Basically, he was speaking upon the gang culture in the book of Proverbs. Now, let me show you how that relates into modern times or uh, bring it on up a little bit closer to history. Shortly after this book here was written and it was published, the Bible came out, you had this tribe in in afghanistan they it's along the kyber pass they call themselves the thuggy tribe this is where you get your term thug from because this tribe was nothing but a bunch of robbers murderers thieves they were the worst of that society and they were bandits they hide, hid out in the kyber pass because at that time in order to go from afghanistan to pakistan i think it was you had to travel through these through this mountains mountainous area and what these guys would do, they were gangbangers. They cast lots with each other. They hung out in the past, and when travelers would be traveling from one country to the other through the past, they would befriend these people, get them drunk, and at the end of the night when they were all drunk and sleep and passed out, they would literally rob them, murder them, cut their hearts out, and sacrifice the hearts to the goddess Kali. This is Thug E Tribe. Now notice, everybody that claims to be Thug is either murderers, gangbangers, drug dealers, or whatever. Can't knock nobody, but the truth is what it is. Our children are being bewitched by the music that is being given to them by the culture of the white supremacists. Now this is how white supremacy does play a part because you look at it. Most of your rappers today, in order to be successful, they have to kill 12 niggas, they have to sell 32 pounds of dope. They have to smoke 16 ounces of weed, have sex with 37 women all before 9 a.m. in the morning in order to be a successful rapper nowadays that's being put out there. Y'all see what a little rapper uh, down in, uh, in Florida just this weekend? 
He um basically, I mean, he's so seduced and so bewitched that he had the audacity to get on there and, uh, on Instagram and entice his enemies, bragging about where he was. And shortly right before he finished this video, his enemies pulled up on him and murdered him. See what they're doing? They're seducing our kids with this music, a culture of death violence, chaos, destruction, and mayhem. They're giving it to our kids, and we really can't say nothing as adults because most time us adults are listening to this same garbage that's being put out there. The seduction of that, you got to understand frequencies and all this, how music has always been universal. Notice when, when uh, Saul, King Saul, always had a troubled spirit, what he would do? He would go get David. And have David do what? Play a harp. The music that David played was soothing. Nowadays, you put this music to an 808 frequency, meaning the lower frequencies, the bass frequency, that frequency that has you move, moving your head, bobbing your head, snapping your fingers, uh, patting your feet. You put destructive lyrics to it, and it sinks into the conscience of our children. So now they seduce them and bewitch them with the music, the entertainment. Look at all the entertainment that's geared to our youth. It's either glorifying homosexuality, it's either glorifying drug dealing, gang violence, or whatever. But you don't have a, 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 a number one show in the black community that's a wholesome show, pretty much talking about wholesome family living. It's all about dysfunction. So they seduce you with the entertainment. And then they come along now and sedate you with the drugs. Notice how they pushing in a lot of places to legalize these drugs. You know, the marijuana is legal in a lot of places now. And the marijuana that, that, that's being smoked now, first of all, it's not natural. Anything that the creator has made naturally produces a seed after itself. This weed has no seed. I mean, y'all might not pay no attention to that, but I don't eat nothing that seedless grapes, seedless watermelon, nothing that does not have a seed. It should go into your body because it has been genetically modified. Again, anything that God creates has a seed to it. So now you're smoking this high-powered weed. You're listening to this satanic, satanic music because, again, you cannot justify it and say it's not satanic because all they're doing is talking about violence, chaos. Death, destruction, mayhem. They're claiming thug, which is a, a literal religion, which is why they're going to jail the way they're going, why they're breaking in your house, why they're killing each other, because they have been seduced by the thuggy religion, the goddess Kali. Kali was a goddess of death and destruction. If you look at her, her epithet, her pictures, her drawings throughout history, she has always been about violence and destruction. So hence, when they claim thug, they're not understanding that they are aligning themselves spiritually with this the goddess of destruction, death, day out, chaos, and mayhem. Literally, what we're seeing is our children being seduced and sedated. Seduced by the music, sedated with the drugs, and now you got a culture of violence, of mayhem, chaos, and destruction. I, also, I'm, before I go, I want to talk about that preacher up there in New York who got robbed for a million dollar worth of jewelry. He bought it on himself. He got what he was asking for. He wanted to be seen by me and so he had all that jewelry, but he was seen by the wrong niggas and they robbed him. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. First of all, I'm not judging anybody. Hey, that man, he, he paid for, he stopped to spend his money on what he want to spend it on. But we do know that this man had a criminal past. I mean, I'm not here to judge him. Hell, I got a criminal past. But guess what? He had, what, they did five years for identity theft. That means he did some serious theft if he did five years for identity theft. He ain't just stealing this nigga's social security number and and get a credit card in this person's name. He got a credit card and did some damage in, in these people's name. But he goes up to, uh, on, on Sunday morning with a million dollars worth of jewelry on. Um, now, we don't know what this man get his money from, but you can rest assured a lot of it came from the church. But I mean, if me as a, a, a parishioner, I couldn't sit up under a pastor who's driving the uh, church every Sunday in a bitly, and my neighborhood right around that church looks like a shithole. There's no way I could do it. 
I cannot sit up on the pastor who wears a million dollars worth of jewelry and the neighborhood is, is probably the most crime-ridden area of that city. We talk about these Arabs and all these uh, other people who taking money out of our neighborhood. Do y'all imagine? Can y'all imagine how much money these churches are taking out the black community? Think about this. Every Sunday, you these people go to church and donate all this money to God, who's evidently financially irresponsible, because every Sunday he needs more and more of your money. If I come to church every Sunday borrowing money or asking people for money, they're going to say I'm financially irresponsible. Well, ain't that the same thing with a lot, in a lot of these churches? Every Sunday, they got to have more money, more of your money go into their pockets every Sunday. That's the height of financial irresponsibility. You see what I'm saying? But think about it. Every Sunday, you go to church and just say that the biggest church in Freeport, we're just going to keep it on the black community. The biggest black church in Shreveport might take up, just say, $15,000 in tithes and offering on that Sunday. They take that, that money that they made Sunday to a white bank on Monday where the members of that church who just donated it the day before can't even go get a loan. This is the game that is being played. If there's only one God and one Jesus, why are there a thousand churches in Shreveport alone? Why are there 35 churches? on the Cooper Road if there's one God and one Jesus. Y'all think it's about spreading the word? Everybody know the word. All you got to do is pick up a, a cell phone right now and you can learn the word. Why I got to go and pay to hear something that Jesus taught for free? And it was only one church, one cause, one one group. Uh, I guess people will say, well, times have changed. You live in cities. But yeah, of all the Christians in one city created one big old church do you think we would have all this, this blight in some of our neighborhoods? Because you still look at some of the, the, neighbor, the neighborhoods where most of your churches are in. Think about this. The churches look like big cathedrals, temples, sitting in the middle of ran down, dilapidated, blighted neighborhoods. If these churches really cared about the community, wouldn't they put more money in back into the community as opposed to the bank? Again, you go and donate your hard-earned money Every Sunday, and they take it to a bank on Monday that won't even give you a loan on the money that you can put. Miss Johnson, Mother Johnson, bless her heart, been in that church 37 years. 37 years, they ain't missed a Sunday paying tithe. Let Mother Johnson electric bill get cut off. Well, they might pay Mother Johnson electric bill, but let Brother Henry, who work at McDonald's, struggling and striving 90 hours a week, only to make $400 every two weeks. And he got to pay 40 of that. You know what I'm saying? And his electric getting cut off. You think they're going to be in a quick help to help Brother Johnson? But Pastor, ain't got nothing to worry about. Pastor driving, can sell one of his Bentleys. You got preachers around here in Freeport right now driving to the, to the neighborhood. Notice these preachers only come to your neighborhood on Sundays and Wednesdays. You know why? Them the days they take up offerings. That's the only time you see them in your neighborhood. Most of these pastors don't live in the neighborhood that they preaching in. They live in gated cathedrals. Then they come to work at a gated cathedral in the middle of a shithole. So we have to be careful and ask questions. Now, everybody, somebody, a couple people ask me, what you think about that preacher who got robbed? He deserved to get robbed. He flashing his wealth, flaunting his wealth in front of some of the poorest people on the planet. You think them niggas ain't going to come in and get it? I ain't, I ain't no thief, I ain't no killer, but don't push me. If I catch you slipping, Pastor, I'm going to help you fall. Because I'm sitting up here trying to figure out how I'm going to make these Vienna sauces taste good with this rice. And every Sunday, you taking part of my tithe money, taking six niggas out to lunch at Piccadilly. And I'm supposed to be cool with that? I'm supposed to care about a pastor who got robbed in the middle of his church because he had a million dollars worth of jewelry on? And you think niggas ain't gonna come? You think niggas care about, I mean, care about, half these niggas will rob Jesus, literally. So you think you safe, pastor? You shouldn't have been flown it in front of some of these people, man. So again, we have to question everything, bro. And when it's getting down to this religion, it has literally gotten crazy, bro. It has gotten crazy to the point where you got people going, taking out loans because pastors say, 
we need a thousand dollars from everybody in here and if you don't really get come up with your thousand dollars we know you can come up with it jesus is gonna be mad at you you got act you got people who actually go take out loans i'm gonna be real the new game is not on the robbery is robbing the parishioners with a bible they don't even need a pistol now all they need to do is just pull out a bible and pull out some of the greatest heists you ever see hey this is your boy rob thomas jr y'all be blessed